Hello all and welcome to our discussion on genetics conception in prenatal development. This can be found in chapter three of our textbook. Our learning objectives for this week are to discuss the genetic basis for hereditary conditions, describe conception in the three dis distinctive stages of prenatal development, summarize some common congenital anomalies and screening diagnosis and treatment options, explain the benefits of early prenatal care and factors that influence prenatal development, and finally give examples of how prenatal experiences and environmental influences affect the development of behavior, health, and disease in early childhood across the and across the lifespan. So an overview for this mini lecture, we will be going over genetics in the human genome, conception, prenatal development, congenital anomalies, prenatal screening, diagnosis, and treatment, as well as prenatal influences. Um, as always, if this lecture does go a bit longer than expected, I invite you to pause about every 10 to 15 minutes, um, review what was discussed, get up, get a drink of water, eat, take a walk, um, and come back to it. So beginning with genetics and the human genome, um, researchers in the 20th century made important discoveries about chromosomes, DNA, and genes, as well as the processes of mitosis and meiosis. Um, so post-genetic science in the 21st century has explored these very important discoveries um, and ways to use genetic information to diagnose, treat, and prevent inherited disease is. Uh, genetic diseases and disorders, so genetic mutations play a role in most diseases and disorders. Um, complex characteristics are influenced by multifactorial transmission. And then with genetics and prenatal development, genes determine the prenatal development of specialized body structures and the parts of the brain. Um, so the more advanced genome sequencing becomes, the more we will be able to um, catch genetic anomalies more quickly. Um, and with this, I invite you to answer or um, think about what your experience with congenital human diseases with a genetic basis um, are. And then if you look at table 3.1 in the textbook, you will see um, some congenital human diseases um, and you can kind of quiz yourself on which you have heard about, which you have not, um, and maybe it will inspire you to look deeper into it. So conception is when a single sperm joins with an ovum or an egg, producing a cell known as a zygote. So the singular cell, or well, at this point, it's two cells. It's a sperm cell and an egg cell together is a zygote. Um, typically, the zygote will be XY or XX, meaning um, it will be male or female. Uh, there are sex chromosome abnorm abnormalities. Um, some zygotes have an atypical number of sex chromosomes, such as with uh, Klinefelter syndrome, where they have two X's and a Y, or uh, triple X syndrome, which is when there are three X's on the 47th chromosome. Uh, twins and other multiples, so siblings resulting from fertilization of two different eggs are known as dizygotic twins or fraternal twins. Uh, siblings resulting from a single fertilized egg that divides into two fertilized cells are known as monozygotic twins or um, identical twins. So you can see here, this is um, identical twins, monozygotic twins. And here, this is two zygotes, which means it is dizygotic twins or fraternal twins.
So infertility in assisted reproduction, uh, assisted reproductive technology, also known as ART, procedures include all fertility treatments in which both egg and sperm are handled. If you look at table 3.2 in the text, you will see um, a little bit more about the processes, what they are. Um, IVF is a very, uh, in vitro fertilization, is a very common um, procedure in which uses ART or is assisted for productive technology. Um, ART is associated with a higher rate of multiple births. Just a fun little fact. So now we have conception, we're moving on to prenatal development. Um, the zygote then turns in, goes into the germinal stage. Um, it's the formation of the zygote in the blastocyst. Um, and then this zygote slash blastocyst implants into the uterine lining. Um, once it is implanted into the uteral lining, it becomes an embryo where the formation of the placenta, the umbilical cord, cord major organ systems and structures happen. Um, also internally, the differentiation of reproductive systems as male or female um, during the embryonic stages, as well as other stages, but um, especially with embryonic stages, uh, the embryo is very, um, what's the word? very sensitive to teratogens, which are substances such as alcohol, drugs, radiation, viruses that may disrupt prenatal development and cause long lasting harm. Uh, after the embryonic stage goes the fetal stage. Um, this is eight weeks to 38 weeks, uh, growth and maturation of most major body parts and systems, and there's rapid production of neurons um, but incomplete brain development. The brain does not completely develop on average until about the age of 26 when your prefrontal cortex is completely developed. Um, the embryo slash fetus will develop from the inside out for the most part. So it starts with all the major organs then um, and develops from, uh, whatchamacallit? like tip to tail, so from head to uh, tail. So first is kind of the brain and the spine and then organs, and then we develop kind of the encasing for the organs and our limbs and legs and stuff like that. Um, the first trimester is uh, development of organs and of what will be arms and legs, whereas the second and third trimesters are mostly growing what was developed. So congenital anomalies, uh, despite a significant decline in recent years, um, congenital anomalies, I will refer the, to them as birth defects, uh, remain the leading cause of infant, infant death in the United States and worldwide. Um, Sometimes people don't know why birth defects happen. Sometimes it is associated with uh, a teratogen or a drug that people thought was healthy and good to use during pregnancy, but turns out it was not. Um, yes, many reasons for birth defects to occur. Oh, and birth defects can be uh, just like a minor inconvenience, people could be born with them and not realize that they have them for their entire lives and live perfectly normal lives to um, extremely serious and life threatening. Uh, moving on to prenatal screening, diagnosis and treatment. Uh, there are options for assessing fetal development and, de and detecting potential problems. Uh, expected parents can take a PGD or a pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. They can do ultrasounds, uh, maternal blood screening, um, chorionic villus sampling, uh, amniocentesis, uh, fetal echocardiography, and fetal therapy. Um, and your doctor will, or the patient's doctor will recommend what prenatal screening, diagnosis, and treatment is best for them. 
So there may be prenatal influences um, that can help a pregnant woman promote baby's health. Um, nutrition is a big one, making sure that uh, the expecting mother is getting a healthy diet, um, hitting all of those food groups um, to prevent a range of birth defects and other problems, uh, decreasing if not completely eliminating alcohol and drugs, um, a common alcohol related uh, disorder is fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Uh, disease. So prenatal development can be affected by the mother's pre-existing chronic conditions or infectious diseases. There is a couple case studies that show that mothers who had like chicken pox during um, their pregnancies can give that chicken pox virus to the baby and then the baby can then, um, oh my gosh, I am blanking on, so you can get chicken pox and then you can, after chicken pox, you get, shingles, shingles, sorry for that ginormous pause. Um, so the baby essentially bypasses chicken pox in the outside world because they had it in the womb and then gets shingles without ever having chicken pox in the earth side world outside of mother's womb. Um, stress, prenatal stress may lead to pregnancy complications and behavioral problems after birth. Uh, environmental hazards. So we talked about teratogens in a mother's workplace and the food supply, water supply, those should all be avoided during pregnancy because they can lead to um, some complications. Uh, also paternal influences. So prenatal exposure to illicit substances used by the father or environmental hazards in the workplace should be avoided. Uh, this is an example of a baby with fetal alcohol syndrome. They have smaller heads, small eye openings, short nose, low nasal bridge, underdeveloped jaw, a thin upper lip, a smooth philtrum or like Cupid's bow, um, epicanthal folds by like your eyelids, a flat face, and there's more. But that is what that picture is showing. So in summary, these are all the things that we have discussed today. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions. I try to keep these as short as possible, um, but you are free to research all, some if not all of what was discussed this week. Um, as always, I said this already, but please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just want to chat. Um, I am here to support you in your learning. Uh, that is all for this week. I hope everybody has a fantastic week and I will see everybody next week.